So the wall is when she realizes she can no longer compete. All right, now this is the older a woman gets, the less attention she gets from men. All right, there are always gonna be younger, prettier women that the top men now want. The, the men that the women want, remember that short-term excitement, that bad boy, that player type? Those guys give their attention now to the newest, youngest women as they're coming in. So as women, you know, through their, like from basically 15 to, um, let's say 30 years old, basically, 15 to 24, especially, women basically get attention from everybody. And now, obviously 15, it's just, that's when they're earlier in high school, they get attention from the, you know, um, upperclassmen and all that. But uh, throughout their like peak, you know, 18 to 24, they're getting attention from everybody. But the older she gets, when she starts approaching 30 and she hits this wall, now her hypergamy, because remember her hypergamy, her only goal, this is the same goal it's been for forever, her hypergamy, the goal is, I've got to lock down the highest status man that my life situation allows. So now, and so a lot of times women don't see this wall coming, right? They're getting so much attention from such a young age. And guys, we don't understand how that is because we're not women. We're, it's so different for men. A lot of men go around their life being invisible almost. Um, for men, it's like you got to do something to see. I mean, just really think about um, how everything is kind of shaped. Like even just the cliche, if, if, a, if a boat goes down, like the Titanic, if it's going to go down, who do you say first? The, the women and the children. Who goes to wars? Men, men are the disposable ones. So uh, we never get this attention. We've never, we're not used to this. So again, we can sit here and go, that's, that's so stupid. She should, that's her fault. But if I, if we were women, it would, it would be different. We, it, we would just be thinking differently. You got to understand this though. So you don't get played. Okay, so once she's about to hit, she, she's like, man, I can't compete. I'm not getting the same looks I used to. And now all of her friends, upper 20s, are getting married, having kids, starting that family. Now she goes, her hypergamy is like going in the back of her mind like, oh, hey, we better settle down, man. We, we better settle down now. And so now she knows, all right, I got to settle for a guy, one of those long-term security guys that won't cheat on her, that won't put her through this emotional trauma, right? But now she feels... Wait, no sound? No way. Wait a second. Jeff, can you not hear me? Can you hear me now, guys? Oh, crap. All right. Some of you guys weren't. I just replugged my mic in a lot. That would have been a bummer. Uh, anyway. All right, guys. What's up? If you have a beer, take a, take a drink with me now. If you got a water, take a drink with me. That's fine. Okay, now, the wall. So again, now that we realize this, right? Now that she's approaching 30, and this is what you guys got to be really careful for, especially on online dating. When she's approaching 30, log both in and out and still no sound. Hopefully your computer, <laughs> have you, oh, bummer, Jeff. Shoot, sorry, Jeff. Sounds like other people can hear me. Um, dang. Uh, I don't have to tell you for this one, but, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, once women hit this, you know, once you'll see this on online dating, when women are about 30 to, you know, early thirties like that, it's going to be a lot more like I'm looking for something serious. You'll see their profiles in the women that are like in their young twenties, you know, something casual, looking for fun, looking for adventures. The women in the thirties are going, I'm looking for a real man. <laughs> a real man, one that's ready to settle down, right? The real man. Uh, and so by the time though, she's looking for that guy again, remember she's already been around for all these alphas, we call them, that then she compares this new guy to. And so the result here is an unhappy couple. You see this all the time. The poor guy now gets treated with disrespect and disdain because she compares him to all of the Chad and Tyrone's the mega alpha guys that she had been with in her prime. The woman that was with the, the, you know, star of the football team. She was the one that was, you know, the one that was sleeping with the, the, the college football players, right? The guys that she was getting the highest status men. 
now when she goes, crap, I can't compete anymore with them. It, and again, this didn't used to be such an issue, but because of technology, because of Instagram, because of all that, women have so much attention from men that then they're like, crap, I'm going to settle for this guy. And then literally in her mind, she goes, I'm settling. And then she's mad at the guy because she's been told by feminism, you deserve the best. Never settle. The guy better do things for you. So what happens is then a woman gets mad at the guy for not measuring up to the alphas that she was sleeping with in her early 20s and all that. And again, guys, this is like a general, not every woman does this. It's not at this exact age, but overall, this is a very... This is kind of the dating game for women these days. Um, and then you guys probably know guys like this that got into a relationship and they're treated. She wears the pants because she's like, God, this guy, I, he didn't deserve me. He better do that. You better take out the trash if you want to sleep with me tonight. You better do this. You better do that. And everything is like, and he, you guys see these guys, right? At the mall, carrying around the bags for their girls, just like looking defeated they're just like, she just always um, rags on them. I, I see this all the time. It's like women are like with these men, even if they're the, the husbands or, you know, long-term boyfriend, you'll see them just rag on them. Like, oh, look, somebody, you know, oh, you made a, you made a mistake. What a surprise. And it's like such a disrespect. And again, I don't fault women per se for this because this is, we're different men and women. But society and feminism has shaped it to this point that you don't want to get in a situation like that. Okay, so here's the solution. I'm I'm not a I'm not a pessimist. I'm an optimist. Now the solution. Now I'm not a guy that wants a. I don't want a long term relationship. I want freedom. I don't want marriage or any of that. There's a lot of reasons I don't want marriage because of family courts and all that stuff, right? But. If you're a guy that's set on that, the, there's no way around this except for you have to know your value. All right. A man that knows his value will behave in a way that signals to her hypergamy that he is a man that other women want in a man that other men want to be. All right. Now, if we just stopped right here, I, I definitely have more slides, but if we just stopped right here and we go, all right, Adam, what are some of the main principles of texting that you have? And let's see how this plays out with knowing hypergamy. All right. Mirror texting. Never text her back quicker than she texts you. Why? Because if a guy is texting a girl back quicker than she's texting him, anytime her hypergamy goes, I can attain this guy. Remember, her hypergamy is always going, I want the highest status man that I can attain for my life situation. So the minute she has you or thinks she has you, she goes, I can attain him. I must do better. I can obviously do better. That's women are always reaching for the next, they're reaching for the highest goal, right? So you never text her back quicker than she texts you. That's one sign that you're sending her that, why is he not texting me back? Does he have other women in his life? Again, remember, maybe you don't, but you're signaling that you're a man that other women want. Um, a man that other men want to be. Okay, here's another principle. Always seem busy, right? You're not just sitting around, hey, I'm bored. What are you doing? You're busy, you're doing something, you're reading a book, you're working out, you're finishing a project. Okay, does any man want to be the guy that's like sitting around like, hey, I'm bored, uh, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna just text all day? No guy looks up to that guy. The guy that's like successful, the guy that's always on his purpose, always doing things, always like, think, you know, just figuring things out. An independent man like that, that's a guy that other men want to be. So you can kind of think about little things right here. And this is why there's so many rules and all that things I have. Um, an example for online dating for how you set up your profile. If I go back real quick to this, all right? So a lot of guys don't know this, but so when I was a school teacher, right? My best years ever for sure online dating was so easy. I could show the long term on my online dating profile because I had, you know, the family time, right? I was a second grade teacher. I was working with kids. They knew I was working with kids. I had a stable career, right? I had this security. However, women would match me. They would expect me to be some nerdy guy or some, or some pushover. And the way I text them, you guys see how I text? They're like, holy cow, who's this guy? No guy texts me like this. Why is he not text? So then I show her I have the short term and that's the jackpot, guys. See, long term, short term. So few men have both of those qualities. 
a lot of men have the short term and they never want to do the long term. Now, I had the long term out there right on my online dating profile. But um, I and then I had the short term part or whatever. But a lot of the guys that want the short term like me, I don't want a long term. So again, eventually women are going to go, I can't date this guy. I want that guy. But well, how do you play the best of both worlds? Long term and short term. You have both. You become that extremely rare catch that no, it, it's so it's like the unicorn uh, of men. Let's see. Okay. Um, all right. Know your value. All right. That's just, again, summing up, know your value. Now, um, actually, one more thing with this. Okay, a guy, guys watching this, guys watching this on replay, if I put this on YouTube later, a lot of guys are going to go, you know what, I know my value. I know my value and I don't put up with these games women play. But why aren't women coming after me? Okay, knowing your value is, this is a cliche term. There's a lot of fundamentals to it. Knowing your value is this. When a girl says, hey, um, she says, um, hey, uh, if you want to hang out with me, you're going to have to take me out and wine and dine me, right? Now, knowing your value, now I, this, is a, this is a new, this is like a new way of looking at knowing your value. Knowing my value, I go, wait a second, hold on, hold on, hold on. In my head, I go, I know for a fact this girl will have a lot of fun if she hangs out with me, whether we go out to dinner, whether we go on a date, or whether she hangs out with me. So I also know that if I don't hang out with this girl, I have a lot of fun by myself. Therefore, I don't need her. I would make her life better. Therefore, I am not going to play her games. If a girl gives me demands, I immediately, like in the back of my head, I just go, ha, I don't even want to go on a date with you. And I, there's girls on my phone that, from Bumble and stuff that we never went out on a date. And again, I go out on first dates. And I like to set a good first impression to really get them hooked, basically. But the women that demand stuff out of me and basically say like, I'm not going to go on a date with you or I'm not going to hang out with you unless you take me out to a nice restaurant and this and that. When I say know my value, I literally go, that just turned me off so badly that I'm not ever going to take you out on a date. In fact, if you want to come over later, you're going to have to bring a bottle of wine and pick me up a Disney movie on the way over. That is me going, I know my value. I know that she would have fun with me. I know that I would have fun without her. Therefore, I'm the prize. She has to work for me. That is what I mean by know your value. Know your value is when a girl that you really like, because the, the hottest women, the most attractive women will play these games testing you to see if you really know your value. <laughs> and the girls like that, the one that you want so badly and everything's been going so good. And then that one time, that one day, she texts you a one word K and it, uh oh, she sounds upset. Uh oh, uh oh. Most guys at that point, they'll say, I know my value, but oh, I must have done something wrong. Oh no, what, what's wrong? And they'll check in with her. They, no, knowing my value is going, you gave me a K, bye, bye, bye. I don't care how attractive you are, bye. You better text me again. You better maybe apologize. That's me knowing my value. I'm not going to settle for a K. Those are little things. When I say know your value, it's not that cliche. Well, you know, just know your value. It's like you, you've got to be pretty firm or the best looking women, they've been through every guy. I told you, they have so many options that they've seen all the games and type of things. So you can't crack. And the only way you can't crack is by literally knowing your value, really understanding your value, especially hot younger women, Jason. Absolutely. Don't forget. Subscribe, like, comment, share the video, but definitely subscribe. Peace.